Okay, everybody, welcome and good evening. Thanks for visiting today for the Summer of Opportunity panel event that we have for you this evening, Creating References and Mentors for Life. My name is Matthew Garcia. I'm an Associate Director at the Career Center. I'm here with a collection of excellent professionals who have agreed to make some time for us today to talk about professional references and mentors and their philosophies about them and sharing of their perspectives on why it's so important to consider these things not just now when we need support and we're looking to provide support for you all, but in the near future for when you embark on your careers. Um, so what I would like to do is allow for each panelist to give a brief introduction and also just their initial thoughts on the importance of having a mentor during college. I think you gotta choose somebody to start. Go for it, Joe, since you, since you jumped, just went right in there. <laughs> uh, I graduated YU in 2014. I was an econ major. Um, I went first to work um, for an economic consulting firm called NERA, doing uh, work on mergers and acquisitions, helping them get through regulatory compliance. So like, there's a lot of legal work that's involved. Um, and at the Department of Justice or the Federal Trade Commission, you might have economists who work with the lawyers. The lawyers on the private side typically don't like to do math and they don't want to hire economists either because they're expensive. So they contract the work out to consulting firms like that. It was really cool, learned a lot of really important data skills, um, but pretty backbreaking hours. So I went to work for the New York Fed for two and a half years doing a collection of a few different things around like interest rates, reference rates, policy rates, and like other markets. Um, and then I went to a long short equity hedge fund called Eminence Capital. I was there for about two years as well, helped build some quantitative strategies, and now I'm a research associate at Bridgewater doing similar work, I would say. Um, and I think, I think the most important part about mentorship is just learning how to have a conversation about the topics that you're interested in intelligently. Like when you kind of talk to your friends, or at least maybe this is just me and ever, nobody else here has this problem. Uh, you, you like don't constrain yourself. You don't make sure everything you're saying is sensible. Like you kind of just put your ideas out there. Um, and in some contexts that's good, but I think learning how to like professionally talk about subjects that are interesting to you that aren't directly related to the work you're fundamentally doing is important. Thank you, sir. Who'd like to go next? I can go next. Nice. Thank you, Genevieve. No problem. My name is Genevieve Scarano. I am an associate market editor at BuzzFeed. Um, I love writing. I've been doing journalism for a couple of years. I graduated from SUNY Albany in 2014 and then got my master's at Boston University in 2016. And I started in the fashion industry and then now I moved to lifestyle and health and wellness. So it's been an interesting journey. And I personally could have not done it all if I didn't have a mentor in college. I think it's so important to form those connections early, whether it's through an internship or professor or through your network, just to have someone in the field that you could talk to and who could help you with your career is so, so important. And it's something that's very important to me and to other people as well, at least in my field, because we are the next generation. So it's very important to help each other out. Awesome, thank you, appreciate that. I can go next. Hi, I'm Shira. I graduated from Stern in 2018 with a graphic design major and marketing minor. And throughout my college career, I did a lot of internships like fashion, marketing, uh, fine arts. So it was a lot of diversity there all within the arts fields. And then I've been working at TAD, which is technology architecture design. And it's a technology consulting field. So when, we, when you build buildings, we come in and we advise on the digital experience, every touch point digitally in the building. Like, the elevator, the check-in, the conference room, so you get that full experience. And also now we're doing a lot of how can we make the virtual experience better. And I'm finishing up my master's at the CAT school now as well in digital media and marketing. I think mentors are really important, even if you know what you want to do and you've had that like goal your whole life. I think it's important to be able to have someone guide you and be in your court and tell you like different opportunities you could take and different paths, like and different things that could enhance your experience, not directly related to your field. And I feel like mentors can often help you do that. Terrific. Thank you, Shira. Ezra, I want to round it off. 
Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, so I graduated Sci Sims in 2016, um, and I got a degree in accounting and went straight into Jewish nonprofit. So right out the gate, a completely uh, separate way from from what I was studying in college. Um, really happy with that decision. Um, I went to work for Nefesh Benefesh, if you're familiar, helping um, Americans um, make Aliyah to Israel um, through the entire process. Uh, I then went to work for YU uh, in the admissions office, recruiting around the country for, for the undergraduate programs. Um, I then went to, uh, I made a huge pivot to the tech sector, which is um, what I always wanted to get back into. Um, I worked at a company called Braze, which is uh, marketing technology, uh, as an entry level sales role. And now I'm currently nine months, 10 months into um, the role I'm in right now at Own Backup, which is an Israeli uh, software company based in New Jersey, because all Israeli companies got to be based in New Jersey um, as an account executive. So uh, SaaS sales, software as a service sales. Um, and I mentioned each role I had because each role I got was. Uh, some way or another, uh, dependent upon mentors and references. So excited to uh, share that with you today. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. I'm very excited to have this dialogue with you all today, kind of starting with the practical pursuit of mentors. So if you happened upon a mentor or you intentionally went and sought after somebody's support, you know, what, what strategy did each of you use in order to find and uh, take advantage of having that mentor in your, in your corner? I can, I can start off, I guess. Um, I, I look at mentorship uh, two different kinds um, in my, my personal experience. Um, the ones that I had uh, within the YU community and then the ones that I had uh, sort of outside of the YU community. Um, and when I say in the YU community, I mean, what kind of relationships are you building while you're at YU uh, that, that'll you know, either be a mentor or a reference for you? Um, for me, that was um, really just, I know nowadays it's tough, but like, I was always going around campus and just meeting different people, different offices, different deans, like just, you know, that, that, that conversation you have across campus, building those relationships, you never know which one's going to click and which one you would want to get closer to. Um, so I was an RA undergrad uh, and head RA and got very close to Jonathan Schwab, who runs the housing on the men's campus um, inside Sims. I got really close with the dean with Michael Strauss. Um, these are internal, like why you, um, personnel that really then I built this relationship with and they they helped me in a lot of different ways um, and then external is more of like people in your community people from your you know where you grew up your parents friends you people you go to uh, shul synagogue with um, people you meet on LinkedIn uh, that's the, the other piece of it and uh, and I can share a little bit more you know as we get through this conversation but that's that's kind of how I think about mentors and, and references Awesome. Thank you. I see we go in reverse order now. Agreed. Go for it. Okay. So that would be Shira. Yes, go for it. Take it. Um, I think strategies are to find a good mentor is also to value like their skills. They don't have to be exactly within your field. I think I still don't have one exactly where I, my field is going. I'm always looking. But like at the time, someone could help you make that decision. I know last year I was like looking if there was possibilities of me going to London with a visa. And I like reached out to alumni. I like looked at why you went on LinkedIn, like who lives in London and who probably didn't marry someone to, to get a visa. And then, and then I, I was reached out. I think it's about asking questions and not just asking for favors so that you can ask them to learn from them because that's really important. They want to help you, but they don't want to just do your favor quickly, pass your reference on. That's not what they're there for. So to make that differentiation and then take advantage of the knowledge is really important. Awesome. Thank you. Proceeding in reverse order, that will bring us to Genevieve. Awesome. So with mentorships, I think there are multiple types of mentorships for sure. I remember at least in my personal experience, I had, I went to a lot of networking events. I went to, there's someone who runs Intern Queen, which is for college students. They're very big in the New York City area, and they always have panelists that come in from all different fields, from fashion, writing, and you get to meet other people. And there's also another network called Ed 2010, 
which also post jobs as well for entry level editors and writers. And they have a really cool mentorship program, which I participated in where young editors who are associate editors or assistant editors mentor people who are interns or fellows or just starting in the field. And it gives you an opportunity to meet and talk and just have someone during that time. And another thing as well, you will get mentors when you start working in the field. One of my first jobs, I had an amazing mentor who was another editor and she helped me fine tune what beats I wanted to cover. And she also expanded my horizons when I went to cover wellness and tech. So you never know who you're gonna meet, whether it's during your college time or after college, don't rule anyone out and just keep in touch with any, everyone and everyone on LinkedIn. And it doesn't hurt to reach out. Like, don't be afraid to just message someone politely and ask her advice because 99% of the time they're going to be receptive and say, okay, I could totally help you out or I could refer you to someone. So just don't be afraid to reach out and get yourself out there. Excellent. Thank you. Dove? Yeah, so I think there were two things that were just said that are really important. One is don't ask people for a quick favor and then be like, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I just want you to do this one thing for me. That's definitely the worst thing you can do. Um, and I also think reaching out to whoever and not holding back is also a good idea. Worst thing that happens is they don't respond to you. Um, so any advice after those two things, honestly, I think is almost like secondary. But uh, what I would add is, is like in my view, there's kind of two different types of mentors. Like people said, for me, my experience was I had some mentors that were people I worked closely with. So either people who managed me during internships, professors that I spoke to a lot and asked questions, and spent a lot of time talking to during office hours, and then kind of like less close contacts, like people in the industry I met at networking events, people I met through friends who happened to be in the industry. Um, and I think there's kind of two different approaches to each. With a closer mentor, I think it happens a little more naturally. It's just about you seeking them out and showing that you're interested in what they have to say and respect them and that you want to hear what they, you want them to develop you. And then I think that will flow somewhat naturally as long as you show the interest and desire. Um, the, the less close connects are a little harder and a little trickier sometimes because like, what do you do? You just call these people out of the blue. You don't see them as often. Um, when it came to people I really wanted to maintain a connection with, like I would just shoot them a news article like relevant to their industry, but I wouldn't try to shoot them. Like there's a lot of stuff, they're probably gonna see it before you. Like you're not showing them anything new. Um, so the thing to do is to like find things that are entertaining or people who are saying things that you think are not smart. Um, finance, we love to think how we're like smarter than other people. It's a big problem in the industry. So the thing you can do is be like, look, this, there's this article that this person from Bloomberg wrote and like they totally misunderstood this thing. Like, what do you think? Or am I missing something? Do they get something that I don't? Uh, and I found that that worked really well. Excellent. Thank you all for sharing. What, I, what I'd like to do is follow up with each of you on what sentiments you shared about strategies and finding mentors. So Beginning with Ezra, I, what, I, what I took away from what you shared was the, this dynamic of internal mentors at college versus external mentors in your field and industry. So when, I guess, choosing to pursue prospects who could be mentors, what came to mind for you as far as how to, I guess, prioritize who you would be reaching out to and for what purpose or goal? Yeah, I think... Um, when it comes to the YU community, it's more, uh, it's less targeted. It's more just my advice in general to anyone undergrad is to not sit in your room, go to class and like, that's it. Like build relationships, not just with friends, but with, with professors, with administrators. Cause you, you know, you learn so much from them and you know, they're there for you, uh, later on when you're an alumni of the university and listen, I pitched, I pitched YU as a profession. So I pitched the YU alumni network in and of itself, and I believe in it. Um, and people are really willing to, to help out there. Um, in terms of, of just thinking about your industry, where you want to get a, you know, where you want to uh, move into um, targeting like the specific people um, in that space. Um, yeah, cold, cold LinkedIn outreach is great. And I do it on a daily basis. Um, it's, it's good. It's not going to get you, uh, you know, uh, as, as good of results as, you know, really working your second degree connections. Um, so people, you know, that may know someone else who they can connect you with in X field or 
that, you know, everyone knows someone. Um, and that's kind of how I built out my network on the more in the professional world. Um, you know, my, my first job, someone, uh, you know, referred me into that my job at YU it's because I built the relationships with all the people in the admissions office and they knew about me and approached me. Um, my job that I, I moved into the tech sector was because I casually, um, you know, I knew someone who knew the CEO of the company and I asked him, I asked him for professional advice, not for a job at his company, but for, you know, just advice. This is, this is what, I, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And then as a byproduct of the conversation, he's like, Hey, everything you just told me sounds like you'd be great fit for a role in, in tech sales. You should go and apply for my, apply my company. So like he's, um, there's so many things that come about from just expanding your network and asking people to connect you with other people. Um, and, and that's, that's what I really tried to do throughout YU and then, you know, beyond as well. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Shira, you had mentioned asking questions as opposed to asking for favors. Um, and I, I thought that was really powerful to kind of draw in as far as navigating mentorship and finding mentors. So do you have some examples or an example that sticks out to you as to when you took advantage of asking the questions that led to a mentor being able to provide some support for you in the short term or the long term? Sure. I think last year I was back close with one of the professors in the art department who has a studio in Brooklyn. So I reached out to her if I could like just come see the studio. I would love to catch up. And after like a half an hour of speaking at the studio, she was like, sure, do you, do you need anything from me? Did you need a reference or something? And she was like shocked that I didn't and I just wanted to keep up that relationship. And I think when people have been like helping you for like four years, you sh that shouldn't be such a shock. And I think it's just like something you should keep up with and like ask them how they are, ask them what, how they got to where they are. And asking questions will also understand how they got to where they are. And if they're a mentor and you value their approach and you value their opinion and you value their advice, like it's, it's gonna be something you wanna hear, I think. So that specifically is just like a shock and I'm trying to think of other stories where asking questions got me somewhere, but I think always asking questions, like you can't go wrong. Awesome, thank you, I appreciate it very much. Uh, Genevieve, you mentioned events and, and programs, specifically networking events and mentorship programs that you know, students, college students or graduate students can take advantage of. Um, so kind of like a two-partish question, how is it that someone who may not be, who may be a little bit apprehensive to navigate social settings to find mentors, how might, how might that impact them if they are looking to take advantage of such networking events or programs? And um, what's a good staple to consider when finding the right kinds of programs or events to attend or become a part of? Sure. So, of course, going to any event where you don't know anyone can be a little nerve wracking. You're like, oh, my gosh, I don't know anyone. But you just have to go up and start talking to people. If you don't want to approach a big group, that's fine. But if you see someone else there that's kind of standing by themselves or maybe a group of two or three, that's usually the good way to go to go in and introduce yourself, because most likely everyone's there, too, for the same reason to meet people in the industry. One thing I recommend is also going on LinkedIn and joining professional networks as well. So there's the online news association for anyone that's interested in a journalism career. They have open panels. I'm sure they're doing virtual events now. And also Ed 2010 and Intern Queen, as I mentioned before, are great as well. And another thing that I recommend is always dress to impress always wear like a nice outfit. Even if you're talking online and you're meeting someone, the first impression means a lot. And just be yourself, just be friendly and just talk to people. And as everyone else mentioned, don't expect anything. Don't expect a job or an internship, but a conversation could go a long way. And just showing you're interested means a lot to other people in your field. And another word of advice I would have too, is to make sure to keep in touch with your professors, as everyone else has said. It's so important to keep those connections. And I am still in touch with my college professors. Um, one of them actually, we were supposed to, I was supposed to go in and talk to her class before Corona happened, unfortunately, but we're trying to figure something out. And she actually helped me go into magazine writing because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in the writing field. So Sometimes those interactions have such long impacts, but always dress to impress, 
go up and don't be afraid to talk to people and look online for local organizations because you will meet people who are in the same field as you and that gives you more room to grow and to develop your career. Excellent, thank you very much. And, and Dove, you mentioned that there were two kinds of mentors, uh, as you have put it, those who work closely or, or possibly supervised or managed you, whereas you have contacts that are not as close or maybe not as, uh, not as close in proximity to your work. So when you take a look at both of those kinds of mentors that you've had in your experience, which have had more or less impact on you and why? Um, so, Per, on a per mentor basis, like on an individual basis, like it's pretty clear far and away that the uh, people who work closely with you have a bigger impact on you. Um, and the reason why is like pretty simple, like you get to really show them your thinking, you get to, they really see how you work and how you operate. And if the thing you're looking for is like intellectual or professional development, like that's where you're going to get it the most tailored to you with the most frequency and the most depth. Um, but I think there's really something to be said for those less close connects. Like I, I remember just reaching out to anybody I could talk to who was in the industry um, and being able to like, just kind of like talk about current events specific to your industry and like what's happening. Um, like not just like, so for example, I mean, maybe this is trivial and everybody gets it, but you can talk about stocks and that's an interesting conversation, but if you can talk about like which hedge funds doing what or which bank is having layoffs and that kind of stuff, like there's a different connection you kind of get when you have that industry conversation um, and learning how to plug into that and like what, where to look for it and how to watch it, uh, I think goes a long way in like merging well with your peers, like appearing as somebody who's committed to your industry and your job, who's like really in it, you know what I mean? As opposed to somebody who just does it. Awesome. Thank you. So switching gears a little bit from the role of mentors to the role of mentees. Um, each of you has been a mentee for a, a particular mentor. So you learned your own style from the experience. Um, what is from each of you one thing that you should definitely do as a mentee? And then what is one thing that you should not do as a mentee? Either that you learn from your own experience or from other people's experiences. Um. I guess we're going again, same order. Um, I think the, these are, this is a small things, but big things on, on my end as a mentor, taking my time to, to speak with someone um, for them and discuss, like everyone's a good person and wants to help, um, but everyone's busy. And so the, 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 be, the most you can do to make it easy for your mentor or your potential mentor, the better. Um, one thing this is more like in searching for someone to talk to that you really want to, you know, be a mentor of yours. I would say reaching out to someone, maybe email or LinkedIn, you know, they can get back to you. They cannot get back to you. Uh, most of the time, maybe they won't get back to you even at all. Sometimes they'll say sure. And then don't, they don't follow up. Um, it's not because they don't want to be your mentor. It's they are busy and they have a million things going on. So my recommendation, my advice would be to always follow up like consistently and something I did not do well uh, as I was graduating college and I didn't realize how important it was. Uh, follow up is probably the most important thing. Um, it shows you're responsible, you're on top of things and you really want to have this relationship with them. Um, so like if they don't get back to you after a week, you can follow up with them. They're not, they're not ignoring you. It's just, everyone's very busy. Um, so that would be like what you should do. Um, what you shouldn't do uh, this this can vary and some people might disagree, but I, I really hate the formality how how if someone will write like, dear Mr. Kapitansky, and it feels like a very formal letter to someone, um, maybe someone um, a little bit with higher stature in a company might be more relevant for me when they see that I'm a few years out of college. Um, just talk to me the, you'd way, the way you would normally talk to someone. Um, so that, that's a pet peeve of mine. I, I hate reading formal text messages or LinkedIn messages, um, that make me feel like, you know, it's a, it's not another person on the other end. Um, but that's my personal preference. Gotcha. Thank you. So I think also back to that people are busy. I think it's important to check with mentors if they like have time and also like, not like, Hey, do you have time to speak tomorrow? But like, Hey, what's a good time next week? So like give them a window of time that they could respond at their convenience. 
and also like showing appreciation like after you speak to them following up like thanks so much for speaking to me or, and also asking how they are like making sure like back to like you, they're not just doing you a favor that they want to see you succeed and that you like show them that you're working towards it I think also like the secondary um that category that like aren't so close to you researching before you speak to them because like I've had calls where like I didn't prep I was like tell me about experiential marketing and like that was all I had and like there were no follow-up questions and I hardly learned because I didn't do my research and I think it's important to do that follow like be prepared for those calls if someone gives you the time circling back on what everyone said definitely do research I know I've been in a boat a couple of times where I've gone to talk to other journalists and you know I definitely could have prepared a little bit more. I would always do the basics, but people love when you take the time to look at their work or look at what they're covering in the industry at the time. I think that goes a long way. Also, definitely follow up. I've had, I've been blessed and have great people who I've worked with and everyone always follows up, ask me how I'm doing. And they're like, when's a good time to talk next week? Does this time frame work? Just be direct. And also don't be too formal as well. You know, just be yourself and genuinely show, hey, I want to, I'm interested in talking to you about something or can you maybe show me how this works or whatever. And, you know, people are busy, but if you really show that you've done your research and you keep following up, we definitely notice. We 100% notice. So always follow up and always do your research because you never know who you're going to be speaking with. And it can go a long way, for sure. Awesome, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think all of that is right. Uh, I agree with the formality thing. Like, I won't not talk to somebody, but it's kind of weird. Um, I think giving somebody a weak window to talk is great. There's nothing, I, there's nothing I like more than when the first email, the person says, here are three times that work for me next week. Can you choose one? Like, and that's the first email I get at for like, makes it so much easier for me to respond because I don't have to think about the response. Uh, and that's key to getting people to respond. The more they have to think about it, the more likely they put it off, the more likely you need to remind them. Um, but I would say the most key thing is to like, in, the, in a conversation, make sure you're getting what's, what's productive for you. Like if a conversation is not going in a direction and somebody's monologuing and it's not helpful, and I don't mean that pejoratively, like people monologue, but people sometimes don't understand what you're asking them or unclear. Like, I think giving them a few minutes to get it out and then politely steering the conversation in the direction that is good for you is important. Um, and I think the way to do that is to ask questions. Like, I like hearing people's thoughts and ideas a lot. Interesting ideas are awesome. But when somebody asks a question that really makes you think or really shows you that they get how to think about something, like that is so much more impressive than anything you can say about finance unless you're some kind of like protege to like somebody who's been in it for a few years. Um, then what not to do, I, I, I just, there's nothing more important than not asking people outright for an internship or a job or something direct. I, I know it's already been said, but I don't think it can be stressed enough. Excellent. Thanks everybody for sharing those sentiments. Moving on with talking about references as opposed to mentors, they can be similarities and differences, but first and foremost, what role has a professional reference or have your professional references played in how you've navigated your careers thus far? Yeah, I mean, in terms of professional references, I view them as, in my personal opinion, those that you feel confident when you're applying for a job uh, that the recruiter will reach out to and will, you'll, they'll have something uh, great to say about you. Um, I, there might be a broader sense of the word references, so everyone else can elaborate on what that means to them. But for me, it really is in almost every application you fill out, they're always going to ask you for references, um, that they can call. It's not, uh, I think every single job I've gotten, they've called them. So it's not like a bluff, uh, recruiters call to make sure that you are who you say you are. And it really, um, working now working in the field and seeing, uh, how HR re recruits people. Um, it makes a huge impact on them, what the, your references have to say about you. Um, so I wouldn't just pick anyone. I wouldn't um, pick your you know, brother, uncle, whatever, because that's obvious. Um, really think about who um, in your professional or academic life um, you'd want a recruiter to call. To call. And then 
also really make sure you ask them their permission first to make sure that it's okay that they be a reference. Um, know that they, they should know when the call is approximately when the call, you know, should be coming in. Um, but in terms of professional references for applying to jobs, that's, um, that would be my advice. Yeah, I think, of course, professional references are important. And I think also when you're in school to make sure you do things that are going to like affect your career because you don't want to get to like senior year and you have to put down a reference and you've only been to camp. And I think because they can speak to your personality, but you want they you want to speak to their professionalism. So even if you want to go to camp in the summer, like take up a part time internship during the school year, if you have time and you should take advantage of being in the city, especially at YU. Um, so I think that's really important for professional references. And also, yeah, I think it's often interesting if they do a write up to like see what qualities they see in you and how you could like push those qualities if they are your strong suit and people see them. With references, it's definitely important to really, really think about who you want to vouch for you when the time comes to move on to another job. Me personally, I've had professors as references and I've also had colleagues that I've worked with at other jobs as well because they've seen my editing, they see my writing, they see how I interact with, you know, photo shoots and models on a regular basis. So definitely make sure you think about who you want when the time comes and also keep in touch with them all year round. And it, say hi over email or if you are really close to them, give them a call, ask them to meet up for coffee or to, you know, meet up for lunch. Those conversations go a long way as well. And when the time comes for you to move on to a new opportunity, those people will definitely have your back and say, no problem. I'll get everything ready for you. Also, another word of advice, make sure you give everyone the heads up too. Um, don't tell someone the day before, hi, by the way, um, this person's going to call because um, I put you down as a reference. So definitely give them an appropriate heads up. Let them know if they have to write a letter or it's going to be a phone call because sometimes it could be a phone call. It could be an email, but definitely make sure you know who you want at the time and always keep in touch with them to show that, hey, like I want to know what's happening with your career. How are things going? that definitely goes a long way and you're gonna have these relationships for life most of the time as well. Someone you met maybe five years ago will have the opportunity to see you grow in your field. And it's so important to keep those connections going when you want references too. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't have too much to add. Um, I think the last thing was said was actually what I was going to say, which is don't let your connections to references die. Maybe less relevant for people in undergrad, but you don't want to get to a place where you're trying to change jobs. You don't have any references from your old jobs and you can't use references from your current job. That's a bad place to be. Um, other than that, I, mean, I think everything's pretty much said. Awesome. So some students may be encountering their uh, first job opportunity that, that either they're applying for or right after their first opportunity, they're going into their second, and they may not have two to three professional references. Uh, what kind of insight or advice would you provide for those students or in positions where they have to literally create a professional reference in a way? How would you guide them to the, to the right opportunities? And maybe we'll go in reverse so that we give Doe the opportunity to lead and then we'll, we'll proceed back down the list. I thought I was gonna get Ezra going to start the rest of the time. That was my strategy. Um, yeah, I think that's a tough place to be. Like, you, you don't want to get there, right? Like, if you're in college, there's no reason you shouldn't have two professors who can write a reference for you, at least. Uh, and if you don't, that's a problem. You're probably not doing something right, or you're very unlucky. Uh, and then if you get one internship, you're pretty much there. I mean, if you want me to get creative, you can try to get creative. I just can't imagine, like, once you're in that circumstance, like, you, you need to find something that doesn't require strong professional references so you can build them. I don't know what else you do. Like, you're not going to put your mother or your brother on there. I guess you could fake it, find somebody, make somebody up, but that's not what I would do. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. That would bring us to Genevieve if we're going in reverse order. Sure. So if you're, you do not want to be in that position to begin with, but if you do happen to have 
two professors or even three professors already. Also think about the other jobs you have had, maybe not directly in the field you want to go to, but even if you worked at a library or if you worked at a summer camp or a child care center, or if you even worked at a store, you can always ask those people for references. I remember I used to work at Urban Outfitters and I was in a position where I needed a couple more references for one of my first jobs. And I contacted my manager who I worked with for like three years and she said, no problem, I'll give them a call for you. So think about the other jobs you've done. Maybe it's not going to be like a fancy office job that you start off with first, but those small things that you have done, including internships and professors combined together, you're gonna have a good start when you go apply for that next step in an entry level position. So definitely remember all the other jobs you've had as well and keep in touch with those references because you never know how they're going to be able to offer you advice or help you get to the next step in your career. Yeah, I think, I mean, sorry, I think those are the two main things, but um, also with professors, like go to like an office hour once, like build like a teeny bit of a connection out of class. So then like, if you ask them for a reference, then I'll like, she raises her hand a few times. So I think it's important to like build that bit of out of class connection and that's a given reference if they're happy to help you. And also like campus jobs or I've, I was a, also a dorm counselor and people have asked me as well. It's not exactly a professional reference, but I think if you go to like RA events, they're happy to write a recommendation for you. Excellent, thank you. I know how Doe feels. I. Uh, <laughs> had to had to switch it up a little bit. I yield my time. <laughs> Every everyone has said it. I actually have one thing. See, going first doesn't work for me. I actually have one thing I would add now that I heard all that, which is Go I actually it. don't think the, I don't think the bar is that high. Maybe that's what Shira and Jenny were saying. But like, first of all, any job you've had is sufficient. I agree with that. And then even if you don't go to office hours with a professor, which you definitely should, it's a mistake not to. But if you don't and you're doing well in the class and you like the material, you should still just ask because something's better than nothing, right? At the end of the day, like, I don't think you should be stuck in a place where you don't have references because you think there's such a high bar for how well they have to know you or how highly they have to hold you. Like, once most people agree, they're not going to say something negative. So the worst thing that happens is they say no. Yeah, I, I would say ask your uh, English professor. They, they might have a good hand at writing you a nice letter. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. Awesome, everybody. Thank you for uh, each of you for sharing. Um, so we, have, we may have some individuals in the room who are trying to see the similarities and differences between mentors and references. Um, so what in your mind makes a mentor uh, different and similar to a professional reference? And does it really matter in the grand scheme of things who can speak to what if you're giving them a certain role in your career and helping you out and supporting you? I can start maybe to change it up again. Sure. Uh, sure. Um, I think a lot of people I work with, I, I think would be fine writing me a reference, but I wouldn't necessarily, like I don't value their advice as much. And I think a mentor is someone you value their advice and value and they can, they want to see you succeed and not necessarily just a colleague. So I think that's like an important differentiation, like a reference. I think back to like, it doesn't have to be such a high bar. I think you're right on that, that a reference can be anyone, but a mentor, you want them to be able to know you a bit more so you can ask them advice in certain areas. And I think also back to the thing, like any job, I think any job often like can be a reference, but also like you can learn a lot from anyone. So I think like just having a mind to open to learning is really important for mentors and references as well. I think also it's really important as well to, you know, have an open mind as well. You don't want to close yourself off and, you know, think that things have to go a certain way, but your mentor should also, you know, be someone who's going to look out for you and speak about who you are. And going back to the whole mentorship relationship, you definitely want them to know like your interests, what you want to do in your career, show them a portfolio. I'm not sure how it works in some other fields, but at least for journalism, it's so important to have a website and to have clips 
and you could show that to whoever you're going to next or your mentor and say, okay, this is what I'm interested in. I'd like to develop more skills when it comes to this, or I'd like to grow my career. So definitely a mentor is important. I think also it should be someone as well that knows you really well. I wouldn't, I would personally, if I worked with another colleague at a past job and they were a higher up position, so if they overlooked my work or they were a supervisor, I would consider that as a mentorship opportunity as well and for references. But I think also it's great to have mentors who you don't work with in the office or virtually. You just, they're in your field and they have a little bit more experience than you. Just keep in touch with them as well. And that gives you more diversity when it comes to the career process and when it comes to moving on to your next role. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other thoughts? I'll flip you for it, Ezra. What do you want, heads or tails? You go. Okay. Um, I think I've been lucky, like my references are mostly my past mentors. I don't know if that necessarily has to be the case, but it's just kind of how it worked out. I don't know if the distinction matters a lot, but it seems intuitive that like somebody who's mentored you is gonna, if, if you're good at what you do and they like you, which hopefully they do, then that's gonna be the best person to be referenced for you. One thing I kind of want to say, maybe this is a little out of context, but like I think within is everybody has good ideas about how all this mentorship, referencing, networking works, but like there's a heavy dose of like confirmation bias. Like everything's happened and now we're all looking back and trying to see what worked for us. And it's not necessarily what works for any individual. Some things are absolute truths, like don't cold call people or cold write to people and ask them for an internship. Like that is never a good idea. But all of this other softer stuff, like if you're an introvert, maybe some of the stuff that's being said doesn't work for you. There's a, there's a lot of different things that can work. And like the most important thing is to be passionate and find something you can, not passionate, but find something you can be committed to and interested in sufficiently. Passion is good, it's ideal, but it's not a necessity. And, and interact with people in the plane of that thing. And as long as you do that, however you do it, however you get it done, you keep pushing at it and iterating when it doesn't go well and try to do better you'll develop mentors and references. But if you're not doing that thing, a lot of it, I think, is going to end up coming from luck or not coming as naturally and productively as you want to do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ezra, thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with what everyone said. I think it's, it's about respecting whoever you're reaching out to, is respecting their time. Um, don't just don't make them go out of their way. Um, don't put anything on them. Like, you know, in the end of the day, this mentor or reference, like they are doing something really nice for you that they don't have to be doing. Um, because they're kind people or, or in, in general, it's just, you know, why, why would someone want to be a mentor? Why would someone want to be a reference? Like they want to help someone out um, that they care about. So do your homework and just come prepared. Um, you know, just, you never want to be, you know, un viewed as like a, a burden to whatever reference or mentor you're, you're, you're have a relationship with, um, that on their end, they're like, I'm putting my effort and time into this and this per this mentee or this person is not, you know, doing their homework or not prepared or just asking me for a job or so. Um, that's, that's my one piece of advice is, is if you put a concerted effort into it, then you know, it's going to, it's going to, the relationship's going to be great. Awesome. Everyone, thank you very much. And what I wanted to do now is give our participants who are in the room an opportunity to ask you all some questions. So if you do have a question and your student uh, attending the event, please feel free to send a question in the chat and we will uh, take those questions and ask the panel general to the panel or even specific members of this panel. So we'll give about a minute or so for you all to type them up. In the meantime, my company is hiring. So if you're interested in joining a tech company, you're welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Nice, nice. Spieling is also welcome. We have some time to spiel <laughs> work for. That's totally, totally good. I know uh, the students are looking for some opportunities as well. So that's, that's the floor is open for that too. I would just qualify something Ezra said quickly, which is I think it's totally true that you want to be respectful and you definitely don't want to be entitled. 
but I don't think you should also come in worrying too much about how much you're asking of people. Like people are good at managing their plates. Like they get this stuff all the time. They'll make a decision like 15 minutes of my day. Like it's not nothing, but it's not everything either. So like, I, I wouldn't, yes, I agree. Be respectful. Don't be entitled. Don't push too hard, but like, I wouldn't worry about that too much unless you know you're somebody who needs to. And people can say no, like you could, yeah. if people, like that's fine. You can ask and they could just say like, no, don't have time, but you know, next time. Or yeah, like reach out to me in a week or two yeah. weeks. I'll say that to people sometimes. I've also had people who haven't gotten back to me, but then have gotten back to me too. Cause they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy. So if someone doesn't respond, don't take it personally. And just also remember to just like be yourself during this whole process, you know, like know your worth, know your skills, know what you're good at. And also just be positive and appreciate what you can bring into your career fields, but also appreciate what others have done before you and how they can help you. So just having a balance of both of that is essential for sure. I think also like back to what Dove said about like, if you like need, like if you don't have a ref um, references or mentors, I think like none of the jobs I've gotten have been from a reference. Like I've always like cold applied on LinkedIn or like on Craigslist, like any, like I've gotten jobs all over and it's always been just like the application. It hasn't been through a reference or mentor, which I think sometimes like networking is amazing. And I wish I like had gotten jobs like through that because it seems like a great like way, but I haven't. So I think there's other options as well. I think that's so key, like 100% true that from, I've had one internship and a very important one that was fundamental to my career that came from reference and that's it. But references and networking have been so important because that's, and mentorship, it's just, it's how you make sure you're developing the right way so that when you get into that interview, you can have the right conversation the right way. It's almost like practice. Like, and if you don't, if you don't practice interviews and then the only time you're practicing interviews are Maybe the career center has some kind of offering. I hope that back in the day they did, like that's good, but you need to be practicing so much more than they can give that to you. And if you're only practicing once you get the interviews and jobs, it's just not sufficient. And that's, that's just another reason why, even if the references and networking don't land you the actual job in a way they really are. Thanks everyone. Appreciate each and every one of you sharing. We do have two questions that came in through the chat. One of which is protocol for LinkedIn references or recommendations that are somewhat towards the bottom of individuals' profiles. Um, do you all have a protocol of, of being approached for writing those recommendations on people's profiles and are they important? It's an inter I was just talking about this about a, with a colleague, um, how much weight those hold. I think, um, I think the endorsement feature on LinkedIn is not, not a great feature because um, anyone can just click and endorse you, but the recommendation feature um, is so key because it's everyone's going to Google you the second they you know get your name and look at your link look that you have a LinkedIn and then look to see what's on there um, and early on in your career or even in college right you you have very little um, which is fine you don't need to be worried about it you got to have some internships um, if you can but recommendations is a great way to fill the space um, that is a very powerful like piece of space that is a public your public profile to the world so. I would make sure that you're picking someone who's a former boss at an internship maybe, or, you know, it's a place where once you get, start getting jobs, you would, you, you would hopefully want to have your manager uh, leave something. Um, but I would also say for every recommendation you get, I would, I would also try and write one for someone as you progress in your career, obviously not right now, but, um, but writing for other people as well is a great, is a great give back. Awesome. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Gotcha. Okay. So last, last question that we got through the chat is how important is a physical letter of recommendation or rather a written letter of recommendation? I think that often depends on the field. I, I don't think I've needed so many in like for grad school, I needed one. So I think if you like going medical route or grad school route, that's really important, but I don't, I mean, I don't think com companies aren't calling people to write you a reference. Right. They'll tell you if you need one. Yeah. Nobody's going to expect you to figure that out by yourself, I hope. 
usually with all editing jobs, normally anything I've had to do, I've always had to take an edit test. That's just protocol for applying for any writing job, but they will let you know if they're going to need a letter. Usually HR people are very cooperative and they'll keep you in the loop and say, okay, you're moving on to next rounds. Like we need this letter of recommendation or we need their numbers or whatever, they will let you know. So don't expect to go in there and be like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know what they're going to ask because they will let you know during the whole process. Gotcha. If Thank they, you. If they do require a letter of recommendation written, um, I would be very careful again on, on who you choose to write that because someone who knows you well can speak to speak about you on the phone, um, but not everyone's great writers. So to keep that in mind as well, if someone's writing you a letter of recommendation. I would say that, that might be field specific. Like I think yeah, it's, field, it's definitely field specific. I never had to do it. Um, I think in the business field in general, it's not as common. But Excellent. I think that's all the questions that we have from the chat. And what I wanted to do to wrap everything up is thank each and every one of our panelists for joining us today and sharing really excellent insight and guidance for you all as you navigate creating your own references and searching for your mentors. Um, these individuals may be available uh, uh, depending on, on their preferences via LinkedIn so that you could approach them on an individual basis responsibly um, and reasonably so that you could get some further insight from them. Um, we really thank you for joining us today again, each of, each of our panelists, and thank you for attending this event. There's one more event in the Summer of Opportunity series in another two weeks. There'll be marketing coming out for that very soon. Um, so we appreciate you coming. Have a great evening. It seems like it's raining outside. So stay inside and stay cool. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Thanks guys for having us. Thanks, Thank Matt. You, Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Thank you.